and welcome to The View, y'all. So somebody watered the little desk that we had yeah. in the garden of desks, and the desk grew. Yeah. <laughs> but it hadn't grown up quite enough. <laughs> so we're going to see what it does in the upcoming days. It's better than it was. Yes. It's not where it will be, no. But it's all right. It's a process. <laughs> it is a process. It's a process. You know, because I feel like I'm doing something illegal with this table. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I can sit here and look really happy like... <laughs> I won't do any more because you know the people upstairs are pulling their hair yeah. out. Yeah. But... We're gonna get rid of our table after one day. Well, no, not quite. We, they, they, they figured it out. They figured out what it yeah. was as soon as they saw folks sitting yeah. and her knees going. And yeah. So crazy things are gonna continue to happen because that's the view now. See, <laughs> stuffy falls. <laughs> One of the things that I am thrilled to say that we told you about last week is it is National Hispanic Month. <laughs> and I don't know, Rosie P, but I think it's a fantastic thing, and we're kicking off our celebration today, and you'll see all the folks that we have, not just because they're Latino, but they're brilliant. Yeah. But why not start off with the best? That's what I said. We got the best here, yeah. then we go to the other best. Oh, yeah. well, thank you. Yes, I'm very, very excited. <laughs> <laughs> As I, I put on the, uh, the feathers. Ooh. In celebration? In yeah. celebration, yeah. and I got the, you know. Let's see, I want to see. You want to see? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, I should see. around my neck <laughs> you know but girl you know i'm not ready for that how about this though we're not ready for lots of things yeah. but some things happen when we're not ready for them like ebola and the panic in america keeps getting worse the first american infected thomas eric duncan is now in critical condition and a second one is returning to the states for treatment today and there's even a call on travel bans but the cdc says they feel that'll make things yeah. worse yeah you know because people have to try they gotta travel right exactly and john stewart did a great thing about it mm -hmm. you know he was like okay like three americans have died of Ebola, or something. three Americans, died, and 300,000 are dying from heart disease. And he was trying to put it in perspective uh -huh. yeah. to not have everyone panic about Ebola, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And I think he did it well. Yeah, and my, my husband, as I told you, he's uh, flying today. He's doing a job for um, a Nike. Okay, she said it, not me. <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, you know, and, and I talked to him about it. I said, you know, just be cautious. Mm -hmm. If they pull you over, just, you know, let them take your temperature. But don't get hysterical about it. You know, it's... It, Is he gonna... leaving or coming back? He's, he's leaving. Okay, okay. Well, you know, what I thought was interesting, though, I think people needed to hear this message that sealing our borders makes the crisis worse because if we leave West Africa to fend for itself, that's where the danger lies. Yeah. So if we were to seal our borders and forbid people from here, really, really smart doctors, some of the smartest yeah. in the world yeah. are here in America, they're going over there to help advise the healthcare mm -hmm. professionals. If we were to shut our borders so that no one could go there and no one could come back, many more people would die and many more Americans would be at risk. So I think that was an important thing for yeah. people to hear. I love that the CDC said it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you know, our Richard Besser, who, you know, we, we were going to try to have Rick Richard here, uh, and there was some concern because people were concerned because he's just gotten back, you know, and he's followed all the stuff he's supposed to do. But people said, well, you know, there's an audience here and we don't want to get them freaked out. <laughs> we don't want to freak them out. Now, this guy, you know, forget that he was on GMA all weekend. <laughs> he's, he's in the building. You know, no. it's already, you know. Yeah. But we all know that nobody in their right mind, and of course there are boneheads out there, but he's not one, he's of, them not one of them, who will do things to make it scary for other people. He's pretty upfront and close and, t and tells you exactly what went on. And so he's going to join us during the week because we want to talk to him about yeah. this so that we can get it in perspective as right. your husband and as you say. One of the hardest countries hit is Liberia. And there's an amazing documentary on Netflix or Amazon called Shout the Devil Back to Hell yep. about the first female president in Africa, mm -hmm. president of Liberia, and how she, a mother, got together with all the other mothers yep. and forced the government to stop killing each other and children 
through all of these tribal wars, and she yeah. is now the president yep. of Liberia, and she is an amazing yeah. woman. So yeah. watch that documentary. Yeah. yeah, a lot of great stuff. A lot of great stuff coming up. So apparently, the Ben Affleck Bill Maher blow up has been a hot topic all weekend long. And you guys saw it, right? You saw it, I Rosa. saw it, yes, yeah. I did. Tell uh, us about it. I was watching it late at night, right? I couldn't sleep, and I was listening to Ben Affleck, and every single thing he said I agreed with. Mm -hmm. I understood his frustration of not being able to get it out, mm. and I wrote on my Twitter, Ben Affleck for president, just right after it was on. Mm -hmm. And then I saw people go crazy, like, Ben Affleck was out of his mind. How could he possibly say that? I'm like, not to me. Here's well, a clip. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, and then we'll go to you. Here's a clip. I think that he was pretty accurate. Go. How about the more than a billion those, people those who are aren't Muslims fanatical, Muslims. who don't punch well, women, who just want to go to school? Okay, wait a second. 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 Sounds like the view. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or know what they all the way. What I loved is I loved how you could see him fuming and building up, and he was just turning bright red. I just think I, I love Bill Maher. I understand kind of his point, but when you make a generalization about anybody, it's wrong. Yeah, and I just want to say Bill Maher has been making a point on his show and on other appearances for the last three weeks. He is a, 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 an out-of-the-closet atheist, if I can say that, and he's making a point that within Islam there, there are a lot of problems and he is calling out liberals which is a Republican I find fascinating for not standing up what he believes are liberal beliefs he, he points out he said this on Charlie Rose that these are illiberal beliefs that that vast numbers of Christians don't believe that if you leave the faith you should be killed so so I think some of it gets lost when we just see the heat of the moment. But Bill Maher, I don't think, is going to stop anytime soon at pointing out what he thinks are violent strains within Islam. And it's a very provocative thing to say because at this moment, there are Muslims flying missions alongside American pilots to help us defeat ISIS. So it is a very provocative thing to say at a time when President Obama has assembled a coalition that includes many Muslims who are fighting alongside Americans. Right, and I think Ben's point was that fundamentalists on the whole are the problems, right? right? Fundamentalists on the whole all believe in some common things. Mm -hmm. That women are second class citizens, mm -hmm. that gays are evil, mm -hmm. that violence is okay if my side does it since mm -hmm. I speak for God, mm -hmm. that sex is generally bad, that other religions are inferior, and that my religion is being victimized. No matter if you're Christian, Muslim, Jew, or Hindu, mm -hmm. they have all these traits in common called fundamentalism. Mm -hmm. Extremism. Right. Yeah. Extremism. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, whenever it's them and not you, it's a problem. Because it could be you in a second. Them and not you, it's them. Well, here's the issue. There are people who believe that. There are Muslims who believe that. There are tons who do not. Right. Yes. Tons and tons and tons. So maybe, Bill, your world is a little smaller. You can come hang out with us. We can introduce you to some folks who don't feel that way. Just Ooh. in case you're interested. <laughs> Ooh, but before we go to break, <laughs> You want to get the word out on something, Rose. Uh, you want to make people aware of something. Yes, I want to tell you that my uh, Chelsea daughter, uh, my daughter Chelsea is 16, and her friend from is also 16, and she has uh, a runaway with her friend, her boyfriend Sam Foley. They're both 16 years old. Uh, they both have special needs and they both need medication. And I just wanted to tell them after talking to both their families that you are not in trouble. No one is angry at you. Please call home. Someone will come pick you up. You're not in trouble. Thank you very much. If you have information, please call this number, the Clinton Police Department, 860. Hey, welcome back. You know, medical history was just made in Sweden, where the first baby was born to a woman. Why are you laughing? It's a very good accent. Anyway. <laughs> the first baby was born to a woman with a transplanted womb. A what? In a transplanted womb. <laughs> a womb, a womb. A womb. Yes. A, a family friend donated to her. Really? Yeah, she had it, I guess, sitting around the house. <laughs> and she said, boy, you know. How does that work? Like, I'm done with this? You can have it? Well, 
Well, the room was hanging. <laughs> As you know, you get to be a certain age. Everything does. <laughs> and she said, you know, I could use that. And the girl said, oh, I could use it. I could put a new baby in there. Can I have... And the lady said, yes, which I, I think was wonderful. It all worked out. I love how, like, a Jamaican kind exactly. of accent just smokes in there. It's yes. a Swedish Jamaican. Yes, it's a Swedish Jamaican. <laughs> So I think that's wonderful, though, that, that sure. I mean, because you never, you, you hear about other things being donated, but you never hear about, like, a womb. Yeah. yeah. So and that's like very that. generous. Yeah. yeah. I, well, if you're not using it. <laughs> the woman was 70, so yes. she didn't really have a lot of use for it. Well, yeah. you know, so it's nice not like you can store it, anything in it. But it's no. nice to know that it holds, right? Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I don't know. I think it's that's nice. It's the only thing that does. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't nowhere for it to go. Right. I get, never mind. Anyway, you know, speaking of nowhere to go, you know, the Real Housewives of New Jersey is Teresa oh. and Joe Judici. Yeah, look, we, they sentenced them to prison time last week on multiple fraud charges. Joe's going to serve 41 months. Teresa's going to begin 16 months sentence. I'm not surprised by the amount of time they were given, I got to say, because you can't mess with the IRS. They don't play. They just don't. They don't care. Yeah. They don't care. Uh, yeah, and, and I understand. I went back and studied after Wendy Williams taught me on Friday who these right. people were, and apparently they shop with like big wads of cash. I mean, that's it's funny sort you of should a, mention that a hint, yes, because right. there is a well, there is a clip that might have been a red flag for folks at the IRS. I don't know. You check it out, see what you think. Table twenty five hundred. We're getting eight of these. These are a thousand each. Okay, and I want to get my bedroom set too. Bedroom dollars. I want two of these. Eighty two hundred dollars. No, there no dollars each. You build huge. You need huge. Yeah. I hear the economy's crashing, so that's why I pay cash. One twenty three sixty. One hundred twenty thousand three hundred sixty. And that's how many rooms? Only one. I want to one. file off my chair. Right. Okay. Bed or well, whatever. <laughs> <for cat number. laughs> you know. Surprise! Oh, that the IRS God. got that. It's a scene, it's, it's, it looks like a scene straight out of Goodfellas. Yes. yes. You know, remember when she asked her for some money and she went, not that much. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's, it was just, it was crazy. I just hope that those kids are well taken care of because yeah. that's the real heartbreak. Yeah. 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 They well, said they're going to do time one at a time so that yeah. they don't overlap so the right. kids won't be alone. But it's like, duh. Yeah. You're on TV. Right. You got to watch. You uh, guys are hundred twenty five thousand dollars I would have said, oh, my God. Right. <laughs> then they would have said, cut, I'd have gone in my pocket and given it to you then. You don't do it on camera. Right, exactly. It's kind of dumb. But, uh, you know, you people had said in the meeting, oh, they paid for cash, but I didn't know it was $102,000. Yes, I thought it was like forty grand. dollars 102? $120,000. Oh, $120,000? Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. And my ATM, I can't even get out more than four hundred dollars at a time. Me so either. I mean, I don't even see that amount of cash anywhere in my life. So for somebody to just whip it out of furniture store is nuts to me. Well, what about this? Uh, uh, uh... A super fan, a man 41 years old named Abe Kalmig, has seen the musical Rock of Ages 500 times in six countries on several cruise ships, spending about 25 grand. Wow. I'm sure he didn't pull it out of his pocket. <laughs> Yeah. It's kind of crazy, but there are super fans. Are you a super fan? Yeah, I'm a super fan. You kidding me? I used to cut out of school the day Barbra Streisand's albums were released. I used to go to Corvettes at 7 a.m. and wait till they open the doors right. to run in and get the first copy. So, but on um, Broadway, I've seen shows 10 or 20 times. Les mm -hmm. Mis, I must have seen yeah. 20 times. I've se I've seen um yeah. But when you and I saw, on Broadway. I, saw, I saw Carolina change mm -hmm. four oh, times yeah. and went to the opening. Yeah. And you go back because every single night is different. Because when you're a performer on Broadway, when you wake up, you're different. Mm -hmm. So you're going to bring a different performance. So I can understand, you know, several, you know, multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. But are you guys ever... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, ever freaked out to see the same people in the audience night after night? Like, when does a super fan become a stalker, in your view? <laughs> well, <laughs> when they hurt you. No, but I mean, is there, is there any, I mean, no, there's no line. I really. like, no, yeah, no. I, I've never, I've never yeah. experienced that. I love the oh, fans. No, yeah, fans are great. Yeah. Fans are great. They are wonderful. And it's nice to see them. But yeah. There has you know? to be a line where, like, yes, same guys, yes. right? When they follow you home, yes. Yes. it's yes. uncomfortable. That would be uncomfortable. Oh, I agree. But you know what? Here's a guy whose example I want to follow. He's a man in Miami. I think we should do, we should do this. He thought he could walk to Bermuda in a, hold on, in a homemade inflatable bubble. 
<laughs> Spoiler alert. He did not quite make it. But he is running low. So this is my favorite part, because he called the Coast Guard, not because he needed help, but he needed directions to Bermuda. <laughs> so he called them. And then he called them back and said, oh, you know, this is getting a little tired. <laughs> Are you asking us to come and find you? Because we have no idea. You're in, what are you in? He's in a hamster bubble. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't Bermuda near North Carolina? <laughs> he went from Miami to Bermuda? Long way north, that's yeah. That's a weird, even Bahamas, maybe? <laughs> he didn't even know where he was going, either. I think. I don't well, know. that's why he called the Coast Guard. <laughs> Guess who? No. <laughs> it's me again. <laughs> I'm back. No. OK. <laughs> enough of the funny jokes. It's crazy. Because, well, not enough. Because oh. a fabulous man is coming. Who's on my This lighting is good for me, yeah. Yes, good for everybody. <laughs> good for all of us. That looks incredible. Yeah. That, oh, man. Keanu Reeves is the star Ooh, of this film. I don't you know. know that. Boy, I expected him to be, you know, dude, it's so cool to be hanging out with you. <laughs> but he's not that dude. He's a totally no, he's different a man, action. Man. Yeah, he's a man. Yeah, and he's, he's, a, he's an he's action hero, yeah. man. He's Clint Eastwood. He is a tough guy. He, yes. The guys who directed this were the guys who did 300 and wow. The Matrix. Wow. So the oh. action is sick. Yeah. yeah. And if you're you great like in it. You're really great in it, John. Not yeah. bad. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying not to suck. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't always happen. You know, Variety Latino just named you number six on their Powerful of Latinos, 20 most influential stars list. You know, your career started on the subway train, and now you're like... And my mother must have voted for that. She must, <laughs> <laughs> she must be one of the judges. Yeah. Oh, look who you're sandwiched between. That's not that kind of sandwich, Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I started on the subway. I, I, I thought it was open mic night. And, uh, and I grabbed the, the conductor's mic, and I was doing all my voices <laughs> on it. Uh, I said, boy, I said, boy, you're a chicken hawk, boy. And the, uh, get, 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 get Popeye, and then I got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> it was like my first... Family a lot in your act, and I know that you've talked about sometimes... Sometimes your family's not so happy about that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, they're, they're not happy about it. No. But the great thing is... My mom can easily be bought, so that's what I love about it. <laughs> Moms are good like that. I know. Yeah. I bought her a brownstone, and she was like, okay, it's okay. I will give you. <laughs> if you give me a country house, I'll forgive you even more. <laughs> she really talks like that. I know. <laughs> Do you, but, but you're like, teasing us now mom. with these impersonations. You've got a couple others, an Al Pacino and a Sofia Vergara. Can we, can we? Well, I just did a movie, Chef, with, with Sofia, so I, there was no way it wasn't. Which I is lovely. Everyone really should great. go yeah. out and see that. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. And it's also on iTunes and Netflix. It's, it's on all over the place. Yes. Yeah. And she, Sofia came up to my door and said, Hello, darling. <laughs> I got my new perfume, <laughs> Sofia. <laughs> you gotta try it. <laughs> so my daughter now smells like Sofia. <laughs> I'm just happy I'm not the only Latina that, you know, people imitate anymore, you know? <laughs> are some spectacular pieces of art and you oh, keep you. them coming you keep them coming how uh, do you you just keep digging in your family no 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 more i i dug a little too deep last time <laughs> <laughs> my my poor dead grandfather but um <laughs> rest in peace right yeah let, leave him alone leave the man alone yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah my, my only regret is that my grandfather never got to see an all spanish speaking manhattan which was his dream but that that didn't happen for him right. but um never mind <laughs> no, it's happening in California, though, but he's dead. Yeah, yeah. he's not going to see it. Yeah. No. See it. But my next one-man show, I, I just started already. It's Latin history for dummies, and it, <laughs> and it works. For, that's all, y'all. <laughs>
<laughs> and uh, you know, it's great for Latin History Month, which is not even a month. What is it? A couple of days? No, no, it's, no it's, like a, it's a month. It's a month. It's a month. It's not like a clean month. I know. Well, by a couple yeah. days. Black History Month is the shortest month of the year. No kidding. <laughs> you can't even get it. Look, you can't even get a parade. <laughs> There's not enough time. No, not enough time. No, not that organized. You got 28 days. It's like a period. It's terrible. <laughs> at least you know it's coming. Like it's coming. <laughs> uh, without a calendar, I'm at a loss. Exactly. <laughs> Give me a clue because it changes every. My what? Never mind. I'm no, gonna get in not, trouble. I know it's hot. I'm leaving before my because I'm never gonna get any. Again. <laughs> How old are your kids? My kids are great. They're yeah. 13 and 14, going through that. Uh, Puberty thing called puberty, you heard yeah. of that? Yeah, but yeah. they're so Americanized. Can I, I know. say that? Yeah, yeah, no, they are. They're, they're she, there's my son as happy as so any cute. man would be in, in those arms. Yeah, look Beautiful. at that. Beautiful. How do you deal with that, that they're so Americanized? Well, you know, it's the opposite of them. You know, when I was a kid, people tell me, don't be Latin if you're going to be an actor. Stay out of the sun, walk in. Like, you used to tell me, don't eat dog, don't even eat dog food, John. <laughs> 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 oh my God! You are so being a mild. But listen, we 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 have we have a clip, right? A yes, we do. Are we going yeah. to yeah, yes, fugly. Yes, Me and Rosie in right. this movie. It's an anti-romantic comedy. It's about this guy. He was fugly as a kid, and then he gets contacts, gets a, a, a gets somebody to cut his hair, and now he just wants to be a player. And uh, but he keeps falling in love. That's yeah, a, but 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 he falls in love with me, yes. right? Let's watch it. And and I'm just so ridiculous. She's a New Yorker poetess. <laughs> Zowie, I think you're a Latina Mel Streep with only one accent. Well, I love Mel Streep, but I'm barely Latin. Oh come on, you're Latin. No, these blue eyes and blonde highlights, I'm not. Oh no, then you're right. You're a, you're a self-hating Latin woman. No, I'm a self-preserving. Latin woman. Oh, come on, you're Latin. You know it only takes a drop. Come on, can, can you dance without music? Yeah, but... Do, do your friends tell you to stop screaming when you're actually just talking? Yeah, uh -huh. but... Right, right, see, can you get to your house blindfolded because the smell of sazon and manteca is so strong? <laughs> yeah, but... See, you, you either really fly for a white chick or my favorite genre of female. Oh. Because you, that, that was a little bit of ad lib in there. Yeah, we were improvising. Yeah, a lot, and all I was over the trying place. not to laugh because I'm supposed to be a mean woman. And yeah, and I was trying not to look at your. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my it, was, it was incredible. For some reason, right. I have this as part of your one of your shows, Fugly. Is that wrong? Am I wrong? Did you not? No, I, I was a fugly child, so I mean that's part of my show, kind of. Cause right. It, so that that no, but it, it no, it wasn't. But it's separate. Thing. Separate, separate. Okay, thing. Gotcha. Yeah, this is kind of like based on an actor who's trying to make it in New York and and and, and, and try and trying to be a player and right. And it all falls apart on him. Right. Yeah. You know. Well, can't wait to see. You know it. how to go. Yeah, you know. It. Well, our thanks to you, John. Thank you for thank coming you. on. Oh, and uh, John Wick is in theaters October 24th, and Fugly is in theaters November 7th. We will be right back. And watch Icy. 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 The treasure of the United States, Rosie Rio. United States, Rosie Rios is one of the most powerful women in America. Take a look. On January 20th, 2009, the entire country witnessed the unprecedented, the inauguration of America's first African-American president. We are ready to lead once more. At the same time, the country was in the grip of economic collapse. The threat of a Great Depression was real. The first task of the new administration was to stop the downward economic spiral. Among the people in charge of preventing a national catastrophe was a woman named Rosie Rios, a first-generation Mexican-American raised in California with eight brothers and sisters by a single mom. Having achieved success in the private sector, she was now a leader at the United States Treasury. And with her colleagues led by the Treasury Secretary, she helped avert a second Great Depression. Today, she remains the treasurer of the United States. And if you look in your wallet, you will find her name. Bravo, bravo. 
I have to tell you, I am so enthralled by you. Um, you know, what I want to ask is, first, what does the U.S. Treasurer do? <laughs> because I know what, it, what, what, they, what you do, but I think the masses do not understand your job. Well, uh, as Treasurer of the United States, I oversee the U.S. Mint and the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. So basically, you print the money in your pocket, your right. coins, and your currency. Wow. <laughs> and how did you get here? <laughs> you know, just, that's power. You know, this that's super power. Guy, I know you're a, you know you're an important person, but I had to give you two snaps and like that. <laughs> you know, and you know, I have to say, I, when I was reading your bio, I was like, how did you do this? Because people ask me that, and sometimes I find it insulting, just because we were born, well, I was born into poverty, and here you are with us being raised with multiple siblings and a single mom, and you made your way to Harvard and then to the U.S. Treasurer. It's just, how did you do it? Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, you know, I really have to owe a lot of it to my mom. You mentioned her. She definitely raised all nine of us as a single parent, sent all of us off to college, and uh, everything I do, I feel like I do for her. I think one of the coolest things about your post is, uh, since 1949, a woman has held this job. Now, let me tell you something about Washington. You cannot say that about all of the posts in Washington, and I think that you're a great example of sort of um, female leadership that, that is gender neutral, right? I mean, you're excellent at your job, and it's nothing to do with being a woman, it has nothing to do, you're just excellent at your job. <laughs> How do we raise a generation of girls who just go for any job, no matter the, the, the precedent? Yeah, now that's a great question, and I can just talk to you about what my mom did. I mean, she certainly, I think, really enforced this really strong sense of values, I think, in all of us, made sure that education is what she stressed for every single one of us. We're all uh, very fortunate to live in a village in California uh, where we had strong support from our church and um, you know really I think for this position I'm very honored to fill it certainly when President Truman appointed the first treasurer in 1949 think of what was happening at that time it was right after World War II women's participation in the workforce increased over 57 percent between 1940 and 1944 so it's very symbolic of President Truman to put a woman alongside the Treasury Secretary on something that the American public sees every day Right. And you're, you're being honored by Harvard now. I am. I am. So I was notified in April that I am the first Latina to ever uh, have a portrait commissioned and will be uh, presented hopefully later next year. Nice. Wow. <laughs> I just want to say, it is, having seen all these wonderful changes in, in our country, there is something fabulous about seeing your name <laughs> on that money. Yeah. I just want to say, it's an honor to sit at this table, but you look at you, look at my rosy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is cool, right? And, and I love that two of your sisters are here yes. with you, yes. and uh, right before we started, you looked at them both and said, no, don't make me cry. <laughs> right? Well, I'm, I'm about to cry, too, because this is a wonderful day, and this is such an honor. I want to thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Thanks to the treasurer of the United States, yeah. Rosie Woo! Rios. Yeah. We will be right back. Devious Maid star Ana Ortiz is time. that you're here. We first met um, on a more political show we on the did. set of Morning, Morning Joe. Joe. And you have this political junkie in your family, and I feel like I just have to get that out, because yeah. often I'm the only political nerd on the set. But <laughs> you grew up in a political family. Absolutely. Talk about your dad. Uh, well, my father is, is, well, he was a city councilman, the first Puerto Rican city councilman in the state of Pennsylvania. Right? That's his uh, swearing in, his first swearing in with my tío Quique and my stepmother, Lydia. Um, uh, with the Puerto Rican flag, of course. Of course. Who <laughs> was? <laughs> without it. You know? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I grew up very, very political. And I have to say, I've, if everybody hasn't seen Yo Soy Boricua, um, her documentary, uh, Pa Que Tu, tu, sorry, pa pa que tu Lo Sepa. sepa. It is required watching in our in our home, and it's so brilliant. I love it. My father was like, "Tell Rosie, I love this." Stuff. So we Thank love you. it, love it, love Thank it. You. And and you studied dance and grew up watching yeah. some. I grew up uh, here in New York City. I was a ballet dancer for years and wanted to just always wanted to perform. I think that was just always something in my life. And grew up watching Rita Moreno and Cheetah Rivera and you know Julie Andrews and <laughs> you know. But the those were my sort of 
touchstones and then, you know, um, watching you on the Fly Girls and just everything. It's just incredible to me. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> See, I'm dying. I might cry. You two are holding it together, but I think I'm going to cry right here. Um, and you ended up, I think, sort of having to defend your role. And this is a creative project. Devious Maids ended up causing a little bit of controversy, especially in your community. Can you talk about that? I mean, you're incredible in it. The show is so smart and so witty. And I met you before it started. And I remember watching the coverage as it went on. You ended up having to defend Latinas playing maids. Yeah, I think I, I, I understood the controversy. I did. I think even when I first saw the script, I was like, really? We have to be maids? You know, I was just like, oh. Um, but I read the script and I knew even Eva Longoria and she's such an incredible supporter for the community and she's such an incredibly smart um, powerful woman and um, so I said let me read the script and I just had fun and I was reading it and I was laughing and, and they are the powerful characters they're I have the to ones say. who hold all the power absolutely yeah well here's the thing for me I it's that we don't have the right to be loud mm -hmm. we don't have the right to be funny we don't have the right to play certain roles and I think that nonsense has to stop mm -hmm. because you know I, I, I do I do if, if the material is good yeah. and it is of worth and it's entertaining and it's well written and well acted we should support one another because you know what there are maids out there and we're we're actually disrespecting maids I was that's you know that's by exactly, saying I don't want to play a maid so no I totally agree I mean my grandmother cleaned homes and it was something like why can't I tell her story with dignity and humor and sexiness and all of that stuff that's that's part 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 of part of yeah and now you are Yes, and now you're you're going to guest star in one of my favorite new shows, oh. and I'm saying that not just because no. it's on ABC. Thank you. It's so good. You're guest starring on How to Get Away with Murder, yes. Miss Viola Davis. <laughs> oh yes, I think we have a clip. Okay, I'm gonna lose the way. I didn't know what to do. I've never needed a Lola to even know you to on it. Yeah, we were here before. I was so grateful that Cheryl offered to put me in touch with you. Well, Cheryl's a long-time client of mine. I'm glad I can be of some help. I'm so ashamed. This is not the kind of thing I usually do. The charges have been dropped. So good. What was it like working with her? I think she's incredible. She is beyond incredible. She's so kind. She's so generous. She's so down to earth. And I love she's so generous. I love she's so generous. I love she's so generous. Earth. Um, she's that whole cast is really phenomenal and they're all so close and yet they really it's hard to walk into a show when you don't know anybody and you and they were all so welcoming and she's she's unbelievable she's an incredible so artist. we are gonna watch Thursday thank you yeah. so much for being here thank you and thank I always want to give a shout out to Casey because I'm shooting a little movie there right now in, in Kansas there you go. City you that, Casey? <laughs> <laughs> our <laughs> thanks to Anna, Anna Ortiz you can catch Anna and how to get away with murder this Thursday at 10 p.m. right here on ABC and season two of Devious Maze will be made available later this year. We'll be right back.